Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You are listening to WERA LP Arlington 96.7 FM. And yes, you know the sound of that theme song. Here with your favorite show on the station, The Plugs, with your favorite host, Specs, Andy Humble, DJ Chris. Hello. What it do, buddy? Chilling like a villain. Yeah. You know, I was trying to come up with a rap. I couldn't think of uh, it. It's not really working out. Chilling like a villain. Yeah. yeah but that's about it. Happy Monday. Happy Monday. Yeah. Happy Monday to everyone out there. Yes, sir. If you're struggling in rush hour, I'm sorry. Um, but hopefully we can uh, we can make that a little bit more convenient for you guys because we got a, a great show on the horizon. Um, not that far of horizon. It's actually really close. We're actually oh, on the air right now. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, as we do, and uh, hey, man, the weather is finally cooperating, dude. I know. Thankfully, especially yeah. for me over this weekend. This, I was in New York. This is the first the time in a long time we're actually in the studio and the sun is actually glaring in. You I know, know, it hurts it, my this eyes. This is a phenomenal feeling. I wish I had my shades indoors. This is the one time where you can actually wear shades indoors, and I think it won't be criticized. I think I can think of... Oh, okay. <laughs> Unless yeah, you're yeah, a professional yeah. athlete. You know. Oh, yeah, then you can wear shades in the dark. Nobody's yeah, going to say anything. still call you out. All right. Um, well, thanks for joining us again, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I mentioned, great show in the works. We got a special show, uh, a fully loaded basketball slash hoop show. And if you guys follow us on social media, if you guys don't, Chris... What? Oh, follow us. If they don't follow us, what are you guys doing? Wrong with you? Um, if you guys know, if you guys follow us on social media, I posted a video today of our special guest joining us in studio, and he's actually here with us in the studio. We got basketball coach and skills trainer Adele Saeed in the building. What's Woo! up? What's up, everybody? What How up, my doing? main man? How you doing, man? I'm good, man. How are you? Not bad, not bad. Hey, man, first time we had you on the show, man. This is the first time for me, too, man. This is a pleasure, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm proud of you. I just want to say that for everyone that's out there in the general public. If you don't know me and Adele go, uh, you know, a few years back. So I've been following everything he's been doing with this whole coaching program he's been doing. And I'm just I'm just extremely proud of him. Thank you, man. Because he's been, you know, persevering, no pun intended. <laughs> no uh, pun intended. With this, with this little slogan. But, uh yeah, you got to dream, build, persevere, man. That's what we do. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, we're going to get into a lot with Adele. Uh, we're going to talk about his coaching program he's got right now, some of the players, um, some of the kids slash players he's had, like what his goals are with this program once he wants to get out of it. And, um, you know, what he wants to do, like, in the future with this because, um, you know, I feel like from everything that I've seen from him that he definitely has a future in the industry. So um, we're going to – but. Hey, you're going to hear it from him. You don't need to hear it from me um, anymore. And um, so do that first half of the show. Uh, we'll get into that. We'll, we'll also, you know, talk to Adele about some some other hoops. We'll talk March Madness, of course. Final Four is here. Uh, we'll get briefly some of his, uh, you know, opinions on, you know, what he thinks about the tournament so far. Uh, get into the NBA, of course. You know, it, talk about some of the favorites he's got, you know, some of his favorite players. And then maybe play a little little few games with them you know a few coaching games and being a coach you know ask him some you know some questions about what he would do if he had these type of players or coaches so it should be great it should be interesting i'm gonna throw some you know haymakers at him i'm sure he, he'll be able to take he's a I'll tough guy ready, man. mentally tough dude so looking forward to all that all right let's get things started let's do it all right adele so to the general public you know who's just getting introduced to you um today you know talk to me about your program that you got going on um, and some of the kids you got and just a little bit of background about how you got into it. Okay. <clears throat> so I have a training business, basketball mm. skills training, uh -huh. and I basically assist these kids in building their core fundamentals. Um, that could go from ball handling, shooting, you know, defense, strength and conditioning. It, basically, I, I would get, assess these kids the first time I meet them, and from there we would just continuously work on skills. Right. And what's the reaction you've gotten from them? Ah, oh, man, the kids love it. Yeah? They put in more work than I do sometimes. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's definitely enjoyable, man, especially for the kids. They haven't had a lot of these house programs don't really push these kids to where, where they want to go, and... Um, it's it's been great man it's been great it's been a journey yeah yeah so what got you into it honestly uh a lot of people that i used to play with used to tell me yo man you should just become a coach one day yeah and i'm like what why and i'm one of those know, people that actually played with you so yeah i have some experience <laughs> with that <laughs> i know you can attest to that but yeah man uh it was basically just i started off doing housing house coach and if people if people aren't familiar with what 
you know, house coach hands. What is that? That is just a simple rec league that anyone who wants to play can play. Uh huh. So I coached there for a few years, and I realized it wasn't pushing me to, you know, I wanted more of a challenge. Okay. And I wanted these kids to improve. And uh, so that got me into training these kids individually. And it's been that a whole lot better, a whole lot better from when I started the house, house coaching and to what I'm doing now. Are there any kids that stand out already? Like, what's the age group that you, you work with? Um, well, the youngest kid that I work with is 10. And 10. he is phenomenal, man. He's doing. <laughs> he's playing for Virginia Elite. He starts now. He's averaging 12 and 12. He just had a 30-point game this week. Oh, wow. In, in How about Virginia. that? Yeah, hey, man, you can tournament. throw his name out there. Show some Angel love. Laura, man. Angel, that's my Angel, man right man. there. Hey, and I think Angel was the guy that actually commented on our page on the plugs on Instagram. Yeah. Yeah, so shout-out to you, my man. Oh, man, so Angel. You put bro. work on and off the court. Yes, so sir. We appreciate that. Yes, sir. All right, so tell me, you know, uh, a little bit into a day – in training with Adele say like let's say all right um, today you have a full slate you know of kids coming in you're gonna train them just tell me what you do from the um, from the beginning of the day you know, as soon as you wake up to towards the end of it you know what's a day in basketball training with Adele say like um, so I like to stretch a lot okay because a lot of them smart man you know the, uh, I've really put them through work so yeah Sometimes people pull hammies or, you know, get cramps. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's tough. But, right, right. You know, uh, we try to do some stair master in there in the beginning, get the legs working, and then from there we'd start shooting. Shooting off the break, free throws, elbow jumpers, uh, layups. You know, from there we'd move on to ball handling. Are you, are you at a point now with your coaching and for as long as you've, you've done it, which – isn't that uh, that um, you know that ba not bad? I'm sorry, that's that's the wrong word to use. Um, it's been a good amount of time that you've been into this, and I know you have, and all the things you said about you know people have played with you. I can be uh, one of those spokes uh, people saying that hey, you know he talks a lot on the court. Um, so I definitely thought that coaching was was a good route for him. But are are you at that point now? with your training where you look can look at these kids and, and these individual players and you kind of like train them based upon the position you think would be best for them or are you at a more general yes level I'm, I'm all for you know training them for their future or what they could be best okay. at. like yeah. would you tell them you know, i recommend you you start at this position or something like that? yeah even though it may be hard because like at that age you know when you're talking about like you know before teenage years you still don't know how tall you're really gonna be mm -hmm. unless you're like me who was the same height as i am now <laughs> since i was 13 yeah, so I, I didn't think i would stay this tall but um so it may be different you know in that aspect but well for example angel okay angel plays the five on his team wow and how tall is he he's probably a five five right now but he's only 10 years old so you know i do train him on his ball handling and his shooting and his mechanics so that um, when he gets to an age or when he gets to the high school level, you know, he most likely isn't going to be playing the big man. Uh, when he gets there, he's going to be ready to play point guard awesome. or shooting guard or wherever the coach needs him to play because what I train him is to make him more overall basketball player. But, First of course, I train him towards yeah. being a guard. So – as a coach, like every coach has their own style of play. Yeah. Like something they really like. That's the type of offense or defense they like to run. What is your style? Uh, I love ball movement. The ball yeah. has to be moving. You know, okay. once once a player gets the ball, he should be able to do what he needs to do to get the ball in the bucket. But, you know, I don't agree with, you know, ball stoppers. It doesn't make sense at all to me personally. So if you had an ISO player – on your team yeah it's a tough question yeah. i know and that was like his strength would you try to fit him in in a way where <clears throat> kind of like how kyrie irving and brad stevens you know handles him in boston yes. with the celtics where it's like kyrie you'd see kyrie's numbers for the most part he would play team ball up until if it's a late game late in the fourth quarter then you know brad stevens would kind of you know take the reins off be like all right kyrie take us to the promised land well that's a tough one. Yeah. Because great players like that also tend to have very bad games sometimes. So, you know, I tried I try to keep the ball in his hands while, you know, letting him 
facilitate, uh -huh. but at the same time, I would try to keep the ball moving throughout the throughout the course of the game. Awesome. Okay. See, I like that. And I think like um, it, I, I I don't want to say easier, but I think it's more convenient. Um, to coach nowadays, especially with how basketball and the and the route it's going in with uh, the small ball game, and you say like, you know, you talk about somebody you were training at with Angel, you know, training him at the five. When really you look at the centers in today's uh, like NBA, you know, you got guys that are like bringing up up the court like a point guard. You know, you got the Anthony Davises of the world, exactly. the Marcus Cousins of the world who handle the ball like yep. like guards. So so I think it, it it's really it's a lot more convenient to be a basketball coach and a, and a trainer because. Um, you're not really coaching a specific player just literally uh, the skills that they need for their position because exactly. it's a position that leads we're in. So, yeah, go ahead. Well, um, I definitely do want to get into coaching. Okay. And, uh, you know, hope I'm, hope to be graduating this December. And with that, you know, much my that increase in time that I'm going to be having, I definitely do want to stay around basketball. So. You know, here's my yeah my coaching call right here. <laughs> Any high schoolers, high school teams that need a coach, I'm ready, man. I'm very passionate. And I'm looking for a job. So all right, so for everyone, all these teams and these coaches that you're talking to right now, and everyone in the general public tuning into us right now, talk to me a little bit about your background um, in basketball. Okay. In playing. Well, um, I played high school, played freshman. Okay. And I've uh, been playing ever since. I didn't play a lot in in high school. Due to my size, you know, we had a lot of great players, a lot of guards that went to my school, but I've definitely been playing tough ever since. Play, been playing a lot of pickup, you know, a whole bunch of leagues here and there. Mm -hmm. um, I watch a lot of basketball. I've, you know, this year in particular, I followed Paul the Sixth, which actually won states yeah. uh, in the WCAC. Yeah. They are a great team, man. They're well coached. Coach Glenn got got a chance to meet him, speak to him a few occasions, and uh, really, that's really where my basketball background lies. Mm -hmm. I've been training now for about a year, year and a half, and uh, prior to that, just doing house leagues and things of that sort. Hmm. So I know you talked about it briefly, but um, you know, talk to me a little bit more in depth about you know your plans for the future and where you want to take this. I remember you you mentioned to me that you you plan on getting a website up and going, maybe having a summer or winter camp. You know, you know what's down the line for Coach Adele. Yeah, I definitely plan to have my website up and running, mm -hmm. uh, where kids can go and you know find drills that they do on their free time. Um, I definitely want to have a more set schedule where I can train these kids and have more free time right now i'm only doing weekends due to school and other priorities but um i definitely want to get into a more scheduled basis and having kids every day maybe a facility coming soon mm -hmm. working on that so look forward to it um and yeah and camps 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 are a huge thing because I, I think we can reach a lot of kids that way hmm. a lot of kids one location you know helps hmm. that way people get uh really good co competitiveness when their kids are around each other so let me ask you this <laughs> well, what kind of coach do you think you are and what kind of coaches what kind of coaches do you think your kids think you are that's a good one man i think i'm an old-fashioned coach okay i don't like all the you know flashiness of today's game yeah even though it's fun to watch but in the game it gets pretty so special. you don't like the high scoring I do. Okay. But you'd rather be... Yeah, I kind of contradict nah, myself right there. I can there. relate <laughs> it to my DJ. I think you'd rather be 90s Knicks type of basketball. Pat Riley, play all defense, hold you to 70 Big points. Man. yeah. Yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, kind of like the game back when it was kind of hard to get baskets as yes. opposed to how it is now where it's yeah. a lot easier. And just throw up a three from downtown and hope it goes in. <laughs> but um, my kids probably think I'm a tough yeah, tough sob. Honestly, yeah, I honestly, that's I'm, that's they, good. That's you what they be. think of me in a good way, though, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So, in today's game, as you mentioned, you know, it's different from how it was in the old school. And I'm glad you mentioned that. You know, you're old school. and You got an old school mentality. I got the same type of mentality. That's yeah. that's why I judge on. So, how do you think, you know, you having that type of mentality? How do you think you can adapt it 
to how players and how basketball is going now in today's world. Well, perfect example, Coach Pop. There you go. Spurs have been doing it for, what, 20 years now? Yeah. Haven't missed a year in the playoffs. They probably will this year. That's yeah. the crazy part about it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, man, you just got to move the ball. Move the ball, play defense. It's really Don't simple. rely on one person yeah. per se, but – you know. No, I'm, I'm I'm really glad you brought up Coach Pop because I think he's he's the perfect example. I mean, you talk about a guy who's who's adapted and has changed his philosophy. I mean, he went from the Twin Towers, the big men with David mm-hmm. Robinson, Tim Duncan. They won a championship that way, playing all defense, inside out game, to then transitioning into okay, Tim D- Duncan was starting to get a little bit older. Let's make this into Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili's team. They started playing more up tempo, but still keeping that defensive philosophy. And something I think was another great reason he brought up Coach Pop was that he used to be a guy not- who notoriously hated the three point shot. Yeah. He thought that thing should have never existed in the game. In a way, I'm paraphrasing here, but that's basically what he said. So for him to adapt and you know, his teams ever last four years, especially like in 2014, the last time they won a championship. I mean, they were, they were shooting the lights out and they were like one of the best three point shooting teams mm-hmm. in the entire league. So for him to go from somebody who completely hated the three point shot to having his team win a championship based on their three point shooting was just amazing to me. So yeah. I thought that's a pretty great example. Danny Green had a great finals that year. Yeah, and we haven't heard from him that. since. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing about shooters, man. Yeah, no, Live absolutely. Doesn't die from the three. Okay, awesome. All right, so we talked about your coaching, um, some of the programs you got going on now, what you want to do in the future. And, you know, my DJ over here asked you about, you know, a coach that, you know, you think you're – who's your favorite coach? Ever or right now? Not right now. Right now? Okay, yeah. I got to say Dwayne Casey. From the Raptors. Dwayne Casey, man. Hmm. He's doing his thing with the Raptors – Especially considering that they haven't changed their team much. They're starting five, at least. Their mm-hmm. bench has been revamped. It's it's crazy. They got the number one spot. You know, they're beating all the top teams. But it's if you ever think about it, I think uh, Kyle Lowry's 32 yeah. right now compared to all those other top guards. And all the, all the top teams really have, you know, one of those top guards. And they're all in their 20s. And... For them to be doing something like what they're doing, being number one in the East, um, with an older guard, it's it's kind of astounding to me. I just think that's ex- they're doing such a great job with Dwayne Casey there. Yeah, I just think um, you know they changed up the the bench now is a lot more involved, and I think that's why they have the best record in the Eastern Conference right now. Um, but we'll get into to a lot of NBA, you know, after this. But uh, sure. I'm glad you mentioned Dwayne Casey. But you know. Let me put you on the spot a little bit. <laughs> and in a I was way, for this. Dun, dun, dun. you know, you talk about um, coaching now, and it's, and I would say, you know, it's kind of easier to coach kids based upon the experience I have. You know, I coach uh, as well, you know, kids yeah. similar to, to your age. So, mm-hmm. you know, I know the feeling to some form or capacity of, of what that like. And it's kind of like a simple, not a simple problem, but it's like, you know, kids' minds are like sponges at that that age, so they kind of soak up everything you have to teach them, and it's a lot more. They're a lot more coachable at that age. But let's say you get to a level where you are in college, or let's say you get to the pros, where you got more egos and guys who are grown grown ups and guys who got their own lives going and things that, you know, where you can you can tell a kid, yo, basketball's got to be everything for you at that age, but you can't tell an adult, or maybe you can, but how difficult do you think it would be? For somebody in your position, let's put you on the uh, put you in a top head coach's um, shoes, and how would you kind of manage those egos uh, for the betterment of the team? Honestly, I think I'd just try and connect with each player and see what mm, they have like going that. on. I like that. Um, you know, you never want to be a burden to someone. You want to be more of an outlet. So once you know you get to know someone, you'll know how to deal with that person. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to change it up a little bit. <laughs> As you I always do. Everybody, oh my every guest God. that comes on this show, whether a player or a coach, I always ask them this one question. What's your favorite movie? <laughs> yes. What's your favorite movie that's related to coaching? Oh, man. Basketball. Well, 
doesn't just have to be basketball. It's just it's related just, to coaching. just because everyone calls me Coach Carter. I, gotta uh, say Coach I, love, Carter. I love Coach <laughs> Carter, too. Yeah, that's my, that's my movie right there. Do you think they really make them do a thousand push-ups and a thousand suicides? That's a lot. As a punishment? That's yeah. a lot I mean, you don't... In the movie, it showed that they didn't do them all at once. Yeah. They kind of did it over, uh, you know, a few-day stretch. Yeah. So, I mean... A thousand? Golly, I haven't even done that with my kids. Yeah. Oh, so I can barely uh, do 10. That was man. high school, though, man. <laughs> yeah, that was Coach high school. That was high school. Yeah. These are more grown-ups, and, you know, they hold them more accountable. I think that's so, so, does it get that dramatic as a coach? <laughs> like how it doesn't, like, in Coach um, Carter, for example? Well, I haven't been in high school yet. Okay. Um, hopefully plan to coach in high school this this coming year this mm-hmm. coming season but um i think it does i think it does because you're dealing with parents you're dealing with other staff members and everyone has their own view of how things should be done but yet you're the one in charge that's why i think coaches deserve a lot more respect than what they are getting now that's true yeah right just because you have a star doesn't mean your coach isn't doing your job or doing the job but mm-hmm. you know that's just how i feel about the situation so every time like before you start coaching or doing your your trainings or anything, is there something that motivates you that inspires you like a pre-training i listen to a lot of kobe Bryant song. Uh, uh, videos. okay yeah <laughs> that's what i do um music sometimes but not really okay. more more of a podcast and motivational speaker type of guy so I listen to you guys a lot I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> so is well, there like you. is there like you don't have to name kids, but is there like a, a a person a kid out there that you train you like you get excited to see every time, or that you know um, you're about to work with them? Angel, man, Angel brings the best out of me. Yeah, I mean that with a hundred percent. He's been with me from day one, and he's still with me now. You know, he said he's ten. He is eleven now. Eleven. He okay. was ten when we first started, and. uh yeah, man, he ended up. He was, he moved to Maryland, mm-hmm. but yeah, he still comes to Fairfax on the weekends to work out with me. Oh, wow. that's yeah. commitment. Yeah, that's, that's commitment. That's commitment. Yeah. That means you're doing your job. I hope so. There's someone coming out from Maryland all the way to Fairfax come out to see you. Yeah. It must be for a good reason. Yeah, man. Uh, shout out to his uncle Ricky. He he played on my freshman team actually. Yeah, how about and, that? Uh, his this is his his uh, nephew. So as soon as he le- heard, as soon as he learned that I was doing this, yeah. He gave me the the tool to you know grow and get better. So shout out to Ricky, man. Shout out to you, man. Well, we're all happy for you, man. Thanks, man. Um, so going back to you know you talk about like some of the pregame rituals you do before getting coaching. You know you talk about listening to Kobe and the motivational um, speeches that he gives. What about or what do you listen to about Kobe that helps you? Um, the a lot of the Mamba mentality videos, you know. Is there what? anything specific that he says that resonates with you? Like a specific line that uh-huh. like stuck with you that he says? Because I have one. What's yours? It's not. I don't know if it's. Right I don't now. know if it's necessarily his line, but he uses a lot, and it just stuck with me. You know, the control what you can control. You know, control line that he control. he always gives. That's the line you used to give me. You used to tell me. Uh, Maybe I got take, it from him. Take what the defense gives you. That's what you always used to yeah, tell me. Yeah, take what the defense gives you. Yeah, that that's that's from you know many, many coaches. But something that you know Kobe used to preach was the um, the control what you can control and the whole light. You can tell that Phil Jackson coached that man. Yeah. Like there's a lot of zen <laughs> to him. Yeah. Um, it was more about just how much he tried to prepare himself and the hours he put in. I can't really think of a. A quote right now mm. but um just the hours he put in man he would he would work nine hours a day two hours at 4 a.m then go home rest and he'll be back at seven then go home and rest and he'll be back at four and it's just like the worth that awesome. work ethic man yeah. it's, it's, it's crazy yeah is that mamba like, mentality is that mamba mentality what you try to teach to the kids uh not so much uh it's more it about, too early. Yeah, I think it's a little too early for some of them. But yeah. mm-hmm. you know, just being prepared. Yes, I think being prepared is a huge thing. Because mm-hmm. you know, we might get up a hundred shots as long as you make your fifty. Awesome. You're good. Great answer. All right, well, hold that thought because we're going to transition into NBA and talk about what's going on in the league today. Okay. Right after the break, and, and uh, it's kind of we're going to switch it up now, and uh, we're going to do a, a few different things here. We're going to start off with March Madness. Sure. He's, hey, what he likes. Um, with, with the final four right now, some Cha. things he's like not liked about the tournament so far, and then uh, 
jump to some NBA and uh, play a little coaching game with uh, Coach Adele towards the, towards the last 10 minutes of the show. We'll give him different scenarios and we'll ask him to uh, to kind of see how he would run things as a coach in that situation with some uh, NBA players. So it should be fun. should be fun. Stay, uh, looking forward to that. Um, but let's start off in the March Madness. NCAA madness tournament. Madness of March. Yeah, madness. I think this year has been one of the most maddening marches of them all. Um, we got a school never heard of, Loyola Chicago. Uh, I've heard today. of them. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know about it. But, uh, Adele. Yes, sir. What do you think about March Madness so far? It's been great, man. I couldn't stay yeah. off of my phone. I, I had the app, the March Madness Live app. I've literally been mm. <laughs> driving and watching games. <laughs> Uh, you know, it's it's been great, man. A lot of game winners, uh, a lot of upsets. Yeah, a lot of upsets. Oh, my bracket. Oh, when did your bracket break? Uh, probably day one. Yeah, day, uh, day, <laughs> day, day one. Day two. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts about the? the uh, how about the game that happened? Or actually, the final four. <sighs> man, I don't know who. Uh, it's definitely going to be Kansas or Villanova, in my opinion. Winning uh, it all. Yeah. I just don't know who's going to win that game because Kansas has some big shot makers. Right. And, you know, they got the, the one dude, uh, Mike Kulik. Makai Luke, I'm sorry. Yep. And Big game last night. Great and then you game. had Malik Newman, who had 32 shooting Malik, the lights out. Yes. Yeah, he was shooting the lights out. He actually had 13 in overtime against Duke. And the the big man, Azubuke. 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 He, he, was, yeah. he was killing the boards yesterday and getting some crucial right. putbacks. What were your thoughts about that game? Because, you know, you can argue that last night's Duke-Kansas game was like a national championship yeah, type of game. definitely. Just on, you know, both of their storied histories, you know, with Kansas and Duke and two of the legendary coaches and Bill Self and, and Coach K. Um, and then, you know, the, the NBA talent, you know, always um, coming to those schools year in and year out, especially with Duke, with Bagley. So just thoughts on that game and, and, and how it ended. A lot of controversy um, in how it ended. Do you think Duke blew it in a way? Uh, I think Grayson Allen blew it. Ah. Ooh. He went 3 for 13 from the field. Ah. And he took a lot of shots towards the end of the game when he yeah. probably should have deferred to Duvall. Duvall had 20 to end the game off. Yeah. But... He also had that opportunity to win the game. He had a last-second shot in the fourth quarter when it was tied up. Grayson Allen, right? Yeah, Grayson Allen, and he missed it. It was actually a really good attempt. The the shot he took is not really what I'm mad about. It's more about what he he did in overtime. He tried to take the game into his own hands Okay. when he should have just stuck with his teammates because everyone was playing well. And and there was a couple possessions back to back to back that he just had to keep the ball in his hands. He was making his free throws. He made all his free throws, but – you know, right. it was just those crucial possessions in a in a elite eight matchup in March Madness. You gotta you gotta defer a little bit, buddy. Right. So, what would you have done? What would you have maybe done differently in that play as a coach or as a player? Because you meant no, as a coach. Because you mentioned how like you like ball movement. You mm-hmm. know, your coaching philosophy and how you would coach a team if you had a team is, you know, you want ball movement. I mean, do you like the fact that Grayson went ISO? I and don't that's like a it, type of situation. But, you know, I have nothing on Coach K. So yeah, no, you know, I, I think he he knew what was transpiring and he knew what to do better than I would in that situation. Right. I just think I would have after if I had a timeout after one or two of those plays, I would have called him over and said, "Hey, get the ball out of your hands." Mm-hmm. If if I did, if I had that luxury, but um, it's you know you can't really call out your senior either you gotta have gotta have faith in him in that situation as well hmm. so is it have tough. faith or, or risk losing it all you know well i think he he sh- he had faith in uh the decisions he would have made you know and mm-hmm. and he got to keep him in the game he is one of their best players and i just just but think you don't think there's a there's a point where you have to tell him something there is um but that was just my observation. Okay. I don't think he did nothing overboard where he lost in the game for sure, but he definitely blew it a little bit. How do you think uh, he'll be remembered now that he's most likely going to be declared to the NBA draft, Grayson Allen? Because uh, we know his history with the tripping and the yeah. in-game situations and players, 
you know, having a problem with him and, you know, him going from having one of uh, the best years a freshman could have had, you know, his freshman year at Duke and then kind of yep. falling off, staying maybe two years than he, longer than he should have in college when it was projected that he was supposed to be a, you know, a first round to borderline lottery pick in his freshman after his freshman year. And now, you know, now they struggled over these last couple of years. At Duke, I mean, they're projecting him to be a second round, maybe late second round pick, possibly maybe not get drafted. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't see him having a long career, even mm -hmm. if he does make it. Because if you look at the guard play in the NBA now, yeah. it's competitive. Yeah. He will get eaten alive. Right. If, if Lonzo's getting, you know, that much That's, competition, oh, okay, okay. then okay. I, I thought I thought you were uh, describing Lonzo as like, the the main when you talked about like how the point the guard plays in the NBA him being the example I no, no I'm, <laughs> I'm saying I'm saying I know I know what you say uh, Lonzo held his own yeah 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 I I'm don't think that he will be able to right okay yeah that's fair enough um well actually maybe one last question what's up on Grayson <laughs> obviously you can't project how a player is going to play, you know, in the future. Um, but I guess, would you have liked him to go to the NBA right after his freshman year as opposed to waiting um, two years? I think he made the right choice. He was probably been a better college player than an NBA player. And it doesn't hurt to play for Coach K for two extra years. Exactly. Especially with the guy who's not only – proven to succeed at the collegiate level but also at the semi-professional level if you talk about the olympics and usa basketball when you're talking about having professional yeah. you know players on your team and so that's an, a good yeah i think i think he made the right yeah and it's pretty unique being coached by coach k as opposed to any other college coach just for that simple fact alone of him having coached nba players yeah okay all right last thing before we head on final four kansas villanova you mentioned one of those teams is going to win it well they're going to play each other um, and then Loyola Chicago and, and Michigan are going to be in the next uh, uh, Final Four matchup. So tell me the two teams in the championship game. Go. Uh, Villanova and Loyola. You That's like Loyola, right? I love yeah. Loyola. I actually love them. You talk about ball movement. I think they epitomize ball movement. And they play so tough. And they are so tough. And they got five guys on the court that can score the basketball yes, at all do. times. So it's it's impressive what they've done out there. I think I want to go with the underdogs on this one, man. I'm always, I'm win always, it all? Uh, As an underdog? Win it all. I'm always with the underdog. Go for the underdog. I'm always with the underdog. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, let's... um. Let's switch things up. Sure. Keep it in basketball as the whole thing. It's a hoop show for crying out loud. Um, let's switch it off to the pros. Let's talk about the association with the NBA. Association with the NBA. <laughs> yeah. It's, an, it's been an interesting year. It's been a great year to me. I think a uh, parody-driven league. But so far, just major takeaways and the thing that stuck out to you most so far this NBA season. Um, Just what? Houston's been doing mm. with Chris Paul, mm. James Harden. What did, what did they go? Fourteen games without losing once he got on the squad. Yeah, man. No, I think um, when Chris Paul, obviously Chris Paul has gone through a few injuries, Knicks here and there. When Chris Paul and James Harden and, and Clint Capella have all been on the floor together for the Rockets, I believe they've only lost one game 20, this year. I believe twenty-two or twenty-three. And yeah, yeah twenty-three and one. That. It's ridiculous. Crazy. It just shows you how great. Chris Paul is to make any big man that he runs with, he makes them a top top five or top ten big man in the league. Mm. As you remember what he did with Blake Griffin and DeAndre Jordan. Right. They both were were they all both all stars one year? Yeah. Yeah. And that I I I can, you know, give all the credit to Chris Paul because, you know, he spreads the floor for them. He gets them easy shots. And that's what a point guard should do in my opinion. Hmm. So how do you think it has worked out um, with 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 Paul and Harden? For one, I, I mean, think. did you did you see this coming? I didn't see it coming. I was did you think it would work? Because yeah. there's a lot of people that said it wouldn't work at all, just because they p kind of play the same way. Or ever since Mike D'Antoni became the coach of the Rockets, and what he's done with Harden in a way making him a point guard, that's when they started playing similarly the same way. 
No, I, I pretty much said that it could work from the beginning mm. because number one, Chris Paul has never played with a two guard capable of what James Harden is capable of. True. Like he's been playing with JJ Redick his whole life. He can't get his own shot. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It makes you laugh. That's and, messed up. And uh, James Harden hasn't played with someone that good since he left the, the OKC, Thunder. OKC, yeah. So, and you can argue that, I mean, Warsaw Westbrook, you could argue at that point in time, wasn't as good as Chris Paul is right now. At yes. that point, when he left, when Harden left. Definitely not as smart of a player. Yeah. So, you know, Russell is doing his thing, though. Yeah, no, abs- no, I give him props. I haven't seen someone improve the way he's improved in so long. Russell Westbrook? Oh, my goodness. He's a he's a nightmare for a defense. Hmm. Nightmare. Complete nightmare. He'll torch you from everywhere. So, what was your biggest disappointment for this season? So far. Because um, it's... We still got a ways to go. I think Cleveland. Cleveland? Yeah, they've just been annoying to watch. <laughs> Usually Cleveland is probably That's a good one word. of the, the best teams that I like to watch just because of LeBron, but, you know, just dealing with all the drama and, you know, you know, Washington's always up there in the disappointments. Oh, my God. Actually, I was just about to bring that up. They brought up Washington. What do you think of the Wizards this season? This was supposed to be their year. This was supposed to be the year that they finally... According uh, to us. According, yeah. Every year is supposed to be the, the Wizards year. I agree, as I said. So, you know, I've never been a fan. I never claim it. Oh, man. They're, they're just below par, All right. if you ask you me. You know what? We're going to have this conversation right now because I always have this argument with Becker. Where do you put John Wall? Oh, here we go. All the point guards. I've had this conversation with many people. I mean, individual talent, he's up there with the best of them, honestly. He can defend. He can he can shoot now. Um, Still needs work on it, but yeah, definitely better. But he's nursing not, some injuries right now, which is not good for any player's development. So is he better than Damian Lillard? <sighs> no, he's not. He I think as a, he I, can't score the ball no, like Damian I think, Lillard. I think I think as a true point, yes, he can't lead his team like Damian Lillard because Damian Lillard has in the in the West constantly fighting for. Top five playoffs. Players. I agree. I'm with you, and I'm. And with where where are the the Blazers right now? They're number three. Number three, three in the West. You know, mm. I, I'm not gonna you know bash J- John Wall because of this, All but right. you know they're they're six in the East, even though he's been even though he's been injured, but still. All right, can't get out the East. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right, let's talk about your favorite so far, and. Um, Obviously, beginning of the year, I'm assuming you had Golden State winning it all, you know, before the year started, just as a... All right, so here's here's my question to you. Now with this new news we have about, you know, Steph Curry and and, and head coach Steve Kerr coming out and saying that he's definitely going to be out for the first round. Mm Mm-hmm. At least, you know, we don't know. It might linger on maybe into the second round, assuming they make it that far. Um, what do you think? How much do you think has changed because of that? Well, like, do you truly believe that really opens the door for teams like Cleveland? And yes. even though with, with Houston. Yes. Yeah. Because um, I know Quinn Cook is great. Yeah. You know, and he's had a couple great games. Right. But you can't rely on him to win you three whole series straight. And and I, I'm a strong believer that if one of the big four, just one of them, is out for any playoff series, they're liable to lose because their whole system is based on all of them, not just one. Right. Right, right. Yeah, but... Uh, oh, no, I think Houston's coming out of the West, personally. Really? Just the way they've been playing. They're playing defense now. they got P.J. Tucker. Still got my man Trevor Ariza holding it down. Gerald Green is a boss. Yeah. They got some They got some, some good players on their screen. All right, back to Golden State for a second. Because I want to I wanna test you as a coach sure. for a second. Let's say in the first round... This is the game? Is the game starting or not yet? Not yet. But okay. it, it's semi. We're doing a little so bit of coaching warm-ups, game. Warm-ups, we're kind of like mixing it all in. Okay. 
but this because this is relevant and it's new. New news about the Curry injury, and he's mm-hmm. going to be out for the first round. So far, the matchup right now for the Warriors is to play the, the Timberwolves in the first round. Most likely, Jimmy Butler is going to be back for the Wolves. So let's say you were in the position of Steve Kerr, and you had to approach a playoff series with the Minnesota Timberwolves, with the emerging Carl Anthony Towns, who I think has emerged into one of the best big men, if not you know the best big man in the in the in the NBA today with another guy in Andrew Wiggins uh growing as well and with uh you know Jimmy Butler coming back and with Jeff T kind of holding down the fort ever since Jimmy Butler has had that injury how would you coach the warriors a Steph Curry less warriors against a team like the the Timberwolves how yeah would, um i would just uh, if I'm not, if I'm not because I, the reason I ask is because you talk about ball movement, and with Steph Curry in the lineup, I believe that the Warriors are like a top five team in terms of pace. Yeah, but without him, they're in the mid twenties. Wow, ranked. Yeah, I didn't know that. Without him, pace because it goes back to the whole thing about you know with Kevin Durant being you know a guy who'd have to pick up the slack of Steph Curry um, was out going back to his Oklahoma City days with, with Russell Westbrook. We know the, the whole theme of that team was a quote-unquote iso ball. That's kind of what their team was. But, Honestly, yeah. I think it would probably end up being iso ball. But, That's what you, you know, would do? To your question. To uh, adapt? Yeah. Uh, I'd definitely try to shoot the lights out, man. With uh, As long as Clay Thompson's back, I would definitely try and use that you know, get Jimmy Lee. Jimmy Butler's a great help defender. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I definitely try to keep him out on the wing, busy with Clay Thompson or something of that sort. But honestly, I, that's tough, man. Timberwolves are stacked with good defenders. So right. I really don't know how I'll do that. What would your lineup be without with, Curry? Without who, Curry? Who would be replacing Curry for you? Sean Livingston, man. Sean Livingston. Sean Livingston's my man. He's been, been balling ever since he got in the league. Yeah. Ever since he got back from that injury, but uh, Sean Livingston, Clay, Iguodala, KD, and Zaza—that's such a horrible five. <laughs> I can't even believe I said that. But yeah, that's not a horrible. Five. Horrible five. Horrible center. I okay. Mean, sorry. Okay. All right. Go ahead, DJ Chris. So it's time for the game. Let's play the game, and I'm gonna All challenge right. both of you. All right, okay. So I want you guys using the East and the West. To make your starting five, and not any team. I want any. I want you to make your starting five out of the teams that are not in the playoffs. Hmm. Wow. All right, coach. So you can use both East or West, and I want both of you to do it. Hold on, you gotta give me a second for this one. Bex, are you good? I mean, I'm gonna let him go first since he's the guest, and okay. I'm nice <laughs> like that. Remember, teams that are not in the playoffs. So what? Starting five or like starting a full fi- team? Starting five. Let's do starting, starting five. five. That okay. you think could challenge for a championship. Wow. Oh, you added the championship part too. I mean, could challenge and okay, that could, could make the playoffs yeah, yeah, and okay. be a contender and be like, all right, they can, okay, you know, challenge okay. teams. Well, the Clippers aren't making the playoffs, so I gotta <laughs> go with. Oh, never mind, never mind, never mind. Okay, uh, the Grizzlies aren't in the playoffs, mm-hmm. so my one and my five are gonna be Mike Conley and Marcus Hall. Okay. My four would probably be Chris Tash Porzingis. My man. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stole it right out of my mouth. My two would be Devin Booker. My man, 70 pointer. Um, this is a tough one. It is tough. Just give me your five. You have right now Gasol, Conley, Booker, and Chris Top. Chris Top says four. So you need a three. I got offense, but no defense right now. You need a three. I'm going to go with Aaron Gordon, just because mm. he gives me some size, some help down so you low. Chris Stops and Aaron Gordon at the three. Aaron Gordon at the three, Chris Stops at the four. Interesting. Well, yeah. What about you? All right. Bex. Um, I'm going Kemba. Okay. This is tough. This is really tough. Can I use Denver? Since they're technically yeah, they're not, not, they're they're not currently, in, yeah. currently they're currently not in the playoffs, so that's fine. <sighs> I'm going with Jokic at the center oh, position. Uh, I forgot about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um <sighs> but we're talking about contenders. I think Gasol got him by a little bit. 
At least by a little bit. I got Kuzma. I was like about to say Kuzma too. That's crazy. At the four. At the four? Oh, no, at the three. I could put him at the four as well. Okay. Depending on how I want to do this. Um, I missed a bad one. Uh, Yeah, I want Kuzma at the four. I want Harrison Barnes at the three. And I want... Jeez. This is a tough one. I'm going to go Tim Hardaway. This is on the fly, by the way. I don't so, have anything whoa, prepped. I literally just what, looked at the standings and picked up. I got Kemba, Tim Hardaway. Uh, Kuzma. No, Harrison Barnes, Kuzma, and Jokic. In yeah. this NBA. I think I think you won. I think Adel, I think Adel, Adel won. I think he won. Adele? Yeah, Adele won. Well, he took Mike Conley. That was going to be my guy. Do you guys anybody choose Booker? All right, here's what we're gonna do. Yeah, we're gonna put this. Okay, we're gonna yeah, put yeah, this on like Twitter or Instagram or anything, and we're gonna ask people to compare both teams and see who they who they your, would take. Your team would definitely run the floor, though. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, yeah, definitely. absolutely. And you're versatile. You got some three point shooters. Mm-hmm. Kuzma is, you know, a dog right now. So I really you like. You contend with some NBA teams that that roster right there. Yeah, right. How would you How would you coach that team? Real quickly. Man, I'd, I'd tell them to get out and run. What's the What's the, well for each player? I'd, Which I'd, beer? I'd run through uh, Kuzma or Kemba Walker just because. Well, your your team. Yeah, I'd run through those those one of those two. Oh, you're talking about my team. I'm yeah, sorry. your team. How would you play it? Would um, you like inside out game, outside in game? Man, I'll have Aaron Gordon slashing, Mike Conley pick and rolling with Gasol. You have high low or Chris Dapps. Yeah, I got Chris Dapps. I think you do a Gasol. High low with with, with Gasol and with Devin Booker on the wing like, you know, Devin Booker's going to get his shots. Aaron Gordon's going to get his putbacks and his and his slashes to the cut to the cup. Mike Conley can see everything. I w- I would play through Mike Mike Conley and uh and basically pick and roll, pick and pops. With Porzingis keep it, and keep it simple, yeah. So mm. with all that talent, I like can't it. go wrong. I like it. How would you coach your team? I would coach my team. Yeah. Well, I give it to Kemba. Be like, yo, uh, go all Big East tournament and uh, <laughs> <laughs> cardiac Kemba on him. Go all cardiac Kemba on him and national, you know, championship, you know, Kemba, and just be like, take us to the promise. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I probably put Tim Hardaway's spot up. You know, Kemba running the show. I'd have you know Kuzma. Up in there, and then use Jokic, uh, play some high low action, and then have Jokic be my faci- facilitators at times. You know, drawing in a double team because he's such a great scorer in the post, and then kicking it out to the open shooters, and you know, just having my, you know, team move the ball that way. And Harrison Barnes, a little, little mm-hmm. bit of everything type of guy, can do- go down in the post and get his, and it can also shoot threes. So I'd have a very versatile lineup. That's just my thing. So yeah, he's doing a pretty good job on yeah. the Mavericks too. Absolutely. All right, we got about. 20 seconds left on the air, so I'm going to leave it up to Adele here to give final thoughts, shout-outs, all that good stuff. Go. Yeah, man. Follow me on Instagram at V-I-I underscore Dooley, D-O-O-L-E-Y. Uh, you can reach me at my email, which is my first and last name, Adele Saeed Visions with two I's, V-I-I-S-I-O-N-S at gmail.com. And, yeah, man, I'm looking forward to hearing from all you people. Let us know what you think, and uh, definitely love the support. Thank you, thank you, thank you if you listened. Yeah, well, it was great having you on. We got to do it again sometime soon. I'm proud of you, man. Keep up the great work, and I know you're going to be great. Thanks, boss. All right. All right, well, that was great. Great having Adele in the studio. We got to get on out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, It's been a great show. We'll be back next.